John in Character presents... Dork Tales! Storytelling with a geekish twist. The Lion and the Hedgehog by Amy Thompson. Um, J- Jonathan, what are you doing? Oh, uh, hi, Reg. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I'm a little busy today. I gotta... Oh, it's fine, it's fine. I suppose I have arrived early. But do you, uh, notice anything different about me? What? Now? Yes, of course, now. <laughs> Set down that picnic basket and check out my new look. Uh, Reg, I was in the middle of... Well, it will have to wait, mate. I have more important matters at hand. Look! Look at these sunglasses I've purchased. Don't you think I look brilliant? Reg, I told you a week ago I have a deadline today. It's time for a new story. Oh, who cares about a new story? I do. But these glasses are ace! They block blue light, yellow light, ultraviolet rays. I can think of another thing they block. What was that? Oh, nothing. Uh, oh, I think I have an idea for a new story. Will you help me tell it? Well, now that I've shown you how brilliant I look, I suppose I'll sit through a story. Oh, thanks for the resounding support. What? Should I strike up a band and play you an overture? Uh, not in the musical mood. Are you ready? Ugh, fine. This is taking too long. I'll start. <clears throat> once upon a time, once upon a time, there was a mighty lion. I suppose he was in charge. <laughs> Great! The lion, revered by all other animals, was known as the king of the jungle. Ooh, he must have known how to look cool. Did he have sunglasses, too? Well, not exactly. He had a fearsome mouth full of sharp teeth. Ooh, and a long, flowing mane. Ah, and his roar would echo for miles through the trees, disturbing birds from their slumber in the canopies. Wow, sounds like a true influencer. That's what I plan on being, when I can convince you to help me take proper pictures. Uh, Tell me, where's the best natural light in your apartment? Well, I guess that window over there gets a good soft light. You won't need a flash. Perfect. No flash needed. I want to be the brightest bellwether all on my own. Bellwether? Uh, Reg, could we get into the story? (sighs) Fine, fine. Just get it over with. Hey, well, I don't mean to be rude. It's just, you're always telling stories. Why is this time any different? Well, for one, I asked if you'd help. I am helping. I'm helping it move faster. Yeah? And how's that going? (laughs) Okay, fine. I'm being a distraction. Is that what you wanted to hear? (sighs) I just don't care about stories today. Today, my goal is simply look good and have everyone else notice. Oh, but Reg, bear with me. I think you're going to relate a lot to the story. And I think you are going to enjoy all my new headshots. I'll get you a pair of sunglasses, too, so we can be twins. Okay, Reg, okay. Uh, Back to the story? Yes, let's get to it. Ugh, finally. Okay, uh, so there was the lion, the king of the jungle... Or I suppose you could call him the Lion King. He was beloved and feared at the same time. Just as I intend to be. Eh, sure. And one day, the lion was lounging beneath a tree in the afternoon heat when a field mouse scurried over his nose and disturbed his catnap. But just as she was about to dart away, the lion caught her under his paw. He lifted the mouse up to his face, dangling her by the tail, and said, Give me one good reason why I shouldn't devour you right now. Ooh, wow. Talk about a power trip. Exactly. But the mouse had her own power, too. The power of her words. 
Before the lion could pop her into his mouth, she piped up. Wait, squeaked the little mouse. I know you're the king of the jungle, and that according to the jungle animal hierarchy, I have absolutely no right to tell you what to do. But if you don't eat me now, someday I'll surely repay you. Oh, someday. Nonsense. As someone who's very much about appearances, I can tell you I'm able to recognize a fib from miles away. Ah, but Reg, there's always a point to my stories. What, that even a small mouse is untrustworthy? This is how you choose to delay my posh photo shoot? What posh photo shoot? The one I was intending you to do with me, in my brilliant new sunglasses. Your home has the perfect aesthetic. Messy industrial loft. Reg, I was thinking we could take a few shots around the kitchen, and then I'd send them to the internet and become famous for being so fab. Oh, is that so? Will you pay me for my time as your photographer? What? <laughs> no! You'll do this for me because you also feel strongly about me being the coolest. Ah, uh, Reg, I feel strongly about finishing my story by its deadline. <sighs> Jonathan, you know the good light will be gone soon, and then the photos will be ruined. Ruined! But, Reg, uh, I don't think you get it. What? Looking brilliant, ace, fab, and cool. <laughs> no, the point of my story. You need to see it from my perspective. Well, I can see perfectly fine through these fantastic, enviable sunglasses, thank you. Look, just listen, okay? And then the pictures? <sighs> fine, then the pictures. So, the lion had the mouse dangling by the tail, ready to eat her, when she said, Please let me go, and someday I'll surely be able to help you. Scoff. Yeah, the lion was unimpressed too. But he was also amused at the idea of what this mouse could possibly do for him. Hmm, I'm not that hungry anyway. <clears throat> And with a growl, he tossed the mouse aside, allowing her to scurry into the brush. Phew! Talk about a lucky afternoon for that field mouse. Yeah, I'll say. Uh, so anyway, one day, the lion was on his favorite savanna prowl. He paused to take a long, refreshing drink in the river and scratched his back on an inviting rock. <laughs> Rocky. Then he climbed up a tree to take a nap on a sturdy branch. Wow, the king of the jungle really knows how to kick back. What a chill dude. So chill, in fact, that he didn't pay close attention to his surroundings, and he walked right into a hunter's snare. He became twisted in a big net hanging from the branch. The lion roared while swinging his massive paw, cutting the rope and knocking the net down with a thud. <coughs> Ooh, what quick thinking. The lion snarled and growled, thrashing and roaring as hard as he could, but he couldn't free himself from the net. In fact, the king of the jungle's movements simply made things worse and he just wrapped himself tighter and tighter in a mess of rope. You mean his powerful, king-of-the-jungle ways weren't working at all? Not at all. Luckily, a certain little mouse came upon the lion caught up in the net, and she was wearing amazing sunglasses and looking very cool, and was named the new king, and all were jealous. The end. Thanks for the story, Jonathan. What? No, it's not even close to the end. <sighs> The lion desperately needed another creature's help. Well, if only the lion had just taken a moment to breathe, instead of relying solely on brute force. Well, he was king of the jungle. He probably thought he had a reputation to uphold. Or felt he had to appear a certain way to the other animals. <sighs> I can understand that. You can? Oh, yes. 
Being such an amazing hedgehog, I know how it can feel to have all eyes on your every move, and you just can't ask for help. But at that moment, yes, at the corner of the lion's eye, he spotted and recognized the little mouse. Yes. And she saw him. Hmm. Sounds like you want me to continue telling the story. Well, now I'm curious about how it'll end, you know. King of the jungle in a hopeless bind and all. So what happened? Aha! You're hooked. Well, the mouse made eye contact with the enormous lion as the wind tousled his glorious mane and the evening sun glistened off of his fearsome fangs. But instead of scurrying away, she was brave. I told you one day I'd be able to help you, she squeaked as she leapt onto his nose. Oh, it's you, the lion growled. He really didn't know how to say anything without a growl, but he was relieved to see his tiny, friendly, and brave acquaintance. Hmm. I never thought I'd see my surprise snack that got away. The little mouse looked deep into his eyes. I know how it feels to be defenseless and scared. I wouldn't want you to feel that way after you let me live. Oh, how lovely. Really? You see what the story is working towards? I think so. Ah, thanks for understanding, Reg. Well, of course, my man, it was a pleasure. I'll continue. So the little mouse scurried into the field and returned again with the most winsome, dashing sunglasses and gave them to the lion, and both the lion and the mouse looked super ace in all the pics and went viral on the internet. The end. Reg, I suppose that's what can happen after I share what really happened. Let's go back a step. Oh, fine. The lion and the mouse reunited, and both were glad to see one another. The little mouse empathized with the king of the jungle's plight and was very keen to help him. Uh, hold on, my friend. What's that word you used? Reunited? Uh, no. Keen? Jonathan, I know what keen means. I mean the word uh, emper... 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 Thighs? Oh, empathize. Yes. What does that word mean? Is it like when you do a lot of squats and your legs and your thighs become very strong? Like amplified uh, empathize? <laughs> Reg, that's a stretch at best. <laughs> no, when you empathize, you feel concern for another person. You're able to understand their feelings, and you can share what they are experiencing. So even though the lion couldn't express his fear, the mouse empathized with how scared she knew he was in that moment. Ooh, wow. And she didn't want him to experience being caught in the hunter's trap? Exactly. Which brings me to the true ending of this story, if you are ready to hear it. Oh, actually, Jonathan, before you do... I want to, uh, um, apologize. Oh? For what? Well, I wasn't ampla, amp, uh, amp, empathizing with you earlier. You really wanted to tell the story properly, and I was doing that thing where I ignore what you need and focus on myself. I'm, I'm sorry. I know making a deadline means a lot to you, mate, and I almost ruined the story. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Reg. Plus, I truly want to know what happens to the fearsome, strong, stubborn king of the jungle. Then we'll take the pictures. Ah, can't forget the pictures. You do have great and cool glasses, by the way, if I haven't expressed that enough yet. Your compliment means the world to me, my friend. Ready for the true end to this tale? Yes. The little field mouse looked deep into the lion's eyes and said, You spared my life, so I will always have your back, my friend. Wow, a little kindness can go a long way. Yep, yeah, that's true. 
and the mouse happened to be an expert at chewing through ropes. She immediately saw exactly how to nibble the way to freedom for the lion. She was very clever. No more need for brute strength or thrashing, my friend. I'll have you out of that net in a jiffy. With that, she set to work, and in a blink, just as she said, the mouse set the lion free. And the two lived happily and safely ever after. Did they remain friends? Well, the story that I'm used to ends there, but I was thinking of adding this little addendum. The lion and the mouse both got some very cool shades and took cool photos together. The king of the jungle and his tiny sweet friend became very famous for their unlikely friendship. Ah, <sighs> I wish it weren't so unique that different creatures could be friends. Oh, but they can be friends, with a little empathy. Oh, I see what you did there. Great job, my man. What a fine ending to the story. Uh, but what's wrong, Reg? Well, I suppose I've also learned that appearances don't really matter, do they? The lion wanted to look strong and tough. But we can be ourselves, and when we need to, simply ask for help. Which doesn't make you weak at all, or less cool, or a bad king of the jungle, so to speak. Yeah, that's right, Reg. I'd argue it makes you even stronger and cooler and king-like. Hear, hear. Well, now that I've met my story deadline, Reg, let's take those headshots. Oh, I don't know. How about some fun photos together instead? Just you and me. Now that's a good way to end any story. This has been a John in Character production. Today's story was written by Amy Thompson and performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Studio Circle Recordings. For more information about this episode, go to johnincharacter.com.